Hi, everyone. Um, so excited to be here. Um, today, I'm going to talk about putting the personal back into personal computer by designing and making my own computer cases. Um, so a little bit of background about me. I write uh, zines about computer science and electrical engineering um, called Double Sort Zines. Um, I am a creative technologist, and you can find some of my work at sailorhd.com. Um, and I also write hardware tutorials at electroqds.com. Um, so when I think of my earliest memories of computers, I imagine these colorful blobs. Um, and they told me that computing is fun. They told me that computing is friendly. And they told me that computing is for everyone. And one of my life's missions is to make computing more accessible for more people. And I can't help but think about how these computers must have influenced that vision. Um, but when I think about how computers look these days, they don't feel very personal. Um, so how do we put the personal back into personal computer? But first of all, what does the phrase personal computer even mean to me? Um, everyone might have their own definition, but after I thought about it, um, I came up with uh, there are computers that I designed by myself, and they feel personal because the, de de the design that I choose is personally meaningful to me. And they're also fabricated and assembled by me. So what would my idea of a personal computer look like? So I started thinking about this project back in 2019. And earlier that year, I had gone to Fukuoka, Japan. Um, and there's this small town um, in Fukuoka uh, where all the bus stops are shaped like fruits. So there's a strawberry bus stop, um, a melon bus stop, uh, a yuzu bus stop, and a watermelon bus stop. Um, and this made me really happy because they're just like so delightful to look at. And it's a reminder that like things that are functional don't have to look plain and functional. They can also be like fun shape and bring people delight. Um, and these computers from my youth also kind of reminded me of fruit. But I also wanted to take it a little further, like on top of um, them being such vibrant, fruity colors. I was like, what if we also add a stem and a leaf to them? So now that I have this idea, how do I make this idea real? Um, so I started trying to plan out this project. Um, and usually when I'm brainstorming, I don't think of constraints. I don't think of like, oh, is this even possible? Um, but now that I was trying to think about how to make these come to life, I did start to think about logistics. Um, and I noticed that in my process, um, ideas that I have for the design will influence kind of the logistics and then what seems possible from um, a fabrication point of view will sometimes also influence the design. Um, so when I started thinking about material um, with the image of the colorful Macs from my youth, the first material that came to mind was really bright, colored, transparent acrylic. And um, when I started thinking about acrylic, the first fabrication technique that came to mind was a laser cutter. Uh, so I went to my local makerspace, um, Noise Bridge, and I took their laser cutting workshop. And um, while I was there, the teacher asked me um, why did I want to learn to laser cut. Um, and I told her a bit about this project. And she gave me advice for how to put the pieces together with acrylic cement. Um, so when in this ideating phase, I feel like it's really valuable to like share your ideas with friends or in your local makerspace, um, and you can get a lot of interesting feedback and tips. So I started researching uh, laser cut boxes, um, and there are a lot of options that you can play with on makercase.com, and I learned about box joints. Um, and this was like the first example of how the design had influenced the logistics of the design and then influenced the design again. I decided to do fruit computers with vibrant acrylic colors. Um, acrylic meant that I decided to laser cut, and laser cutting meant that I was probably going to have mostly sharp edges in my design. Um, so when I thought about the electronics inside, I had a bunch of Raspberry Pis laying, ar pies laying around and Thankfully, they all already fit the fruit theme. Um, I shopped for different uh, possible displays online, um, and I was really in love with the 
um, 4-3 aspect ratio with a Pimeroni screen. Um, so that's what I picked. And I had um, all the cables to connect them just in a, a random electronics bin in my closet. So I've done some 3D modeling work, but it's mostly for animation and rendering, um, and I'd never used CAD before. So um, I tried out a bunch of different CAD programs and picked the one that um, felt the most intuitive to me. Um, and then because I was starting with some physical um, electronic parts already, like the Pimeroni screen, I first modeled those out in uh, the CAD program, and then I built the rest of the computer design around that. So um, because I wanted to learn from my mistakes cheaply, um, the very first prototype I made was a literal paper prototype, or at least cardboard prototype, of the computer. And I also hooked up all the electronics together. Um, I didn't actually put the electronics in the computer because the computer was held together by washi tape and was kind of flimsy. Um, but I felt like this was a pretty good prototype. Um, and uh, what I learned from that prototype was that it would probably be useful to have some sort of a bracket in the front of the computer to help hold up the monitor. So I went back to the CAD program and kind of modeled what that could look like. Um, and so for my second prototype, I wanted to use the actual material because um, I wasn't sure if there was anything I might, I might need to learn um, from using actual acrylic. Um, and it was my first time using acrylic cement, which I did on the roof with mask and gloves because it's pretty toxic. But acrylic cement actually temporarily melts the acrylic. Um, so when you put it together, the pieces together, um, it's like a stronger join than if you were using glue or something. Um, and then I put the electronic components inside the case. Um, and it turned out that the little um, scaffold that I had built for the front of the computer seemed to work pretty well. Um, and what I learned from this round was that um, the cables that I had just gotten from my closet were pretty stiff, and they were kind of awkward in the computer. Um, so I searched online and found um, thin ribbon cable versions of all those cables. And um, the Raspberry Pi had just been kind of floating around in the case, um, and I thought it could be nicer to have an actual designated section for it with like acrylic walls. Um, and I added more portholes in the back for convenience. Um, and now that I had the base of the computer um, pretty much figured out, and now it was time to add the fruit details. Um, so I made 3D renders um, of different fruit that I wanted to make. Um, and then I used those renders to help guide me in the CAD program um, to make those shapes from flat acrylic. Um, and these are the final computers. I ended up with a strawberry. Um, the seeds on the side are yellow contact paper, um, a yuzu, a blueberry, um, an orange, and a mangosteen. And the mangosteen is actually the most personal of all the computers to me because um, it's a fruit that grows in the tropics in Indonesia. Um, I was born in Indonesia, so it's like a very personal fruit to me. I exhibited them all um, in November 2021 at an art gallery called Capsule Corner in LA. Um, and because uh, that was pretty fast, here's like a, a brief overview of the planning process that I figured out um, while working on these computers. So I started with brainstorming, um, where I didn't think about constraints. Um, when I started to plan, I did start to think about real world constraints, and my planning was broken up into design and logistics, which both influenced each other. And once I had figured out um, the basic design that I wanted, um, I started making that into more detailed schematics that I could use for fabrication. Um, all the uh, designs that I did in CAD, um, there was a, a plugin that could export them to SVGs that could be laser cuts. So that was super handy. Um, and when I was um, happy with my first round of schematics, I built a super cheap prototype in paper. Um, and once uh, that seemed to work pretty well, I started prototyping with the actual materials and electronics um, and going back to the schematics whenever I noticed that there were things that I could improve or fix um, and kept repeating that until I ended up with 
a final result that I was happy with. Um, and I feel like I really did benefit from trying to make these computer cases myself instead of um, just buying them off the shelf. Um, and not only could you probably not find designs um, that are so personal to you off the shelf, uh, going through this process myself helped me to learn CAD. Um, it meant that I learned how to design with box joints. Um, I learned how to laser cut. Um, I learned how to use acrylic cement. Um, it helped me develop a process for personal project planning. And I felt really connected to the computers because I designed them with a design that was personal to me and influenced by um, a trip that I had. And um, I also had the experience of building them myself. So a couple of people have asked um, if I would share the laser cutting files or share the CAD files. Um, and I think that if I did that, it would be a disservice because uh, personal and personal computer means that you come up with a design that means something to you and go through the whole design and iterating process yourself. So instead, um, I would like to end on an exercise to help you brainstorm about what a personal computer could look like for you. Um, so to start off, I'll share some more computer ideas or inspiration for other types or shapes of computers you could build. Um, these were some computers that I built right after the fruit ones. Um, they're animal ones, so there's a frog, a Shiba Inu computer for one of my friends who's obsessed with Shiba Inu, um, a rabbit computer, um, and then my studio mate Alice made matching um, chairs for each of these computers. And here's more um, computer inspiration. Um, you could take it in a really um, sparkly and holographic direction. You could go retro futuristic. You could go pastel and roundy shape. Um, you could go wood. Uh, you, um, the one on the left is a, a prototype from Apple that never made it to production, but that I think is pretty cute. Um, you could go fabric, uh, you could crochet, you could embroider your computer, um, you could have a bunch of LEDs that are pushable. Um, yeah, so you can sit with these for some inspiration. Um, and now I'll share some prompts that might help um, spark some ideas in you. So what does the phrase personal computer mean to you? If you can make any computer real, what would that be like? If you were a character in your favorite movie, what would your computer look like? Or if you were a cartoon character, what would your computer look like? What aspects of your personality um, or life experience would you want to incorporate into your computer? What size is your dream computer? Does it fit in your pocket? Does it fit on a table or is it taller than you? What's the shape of your personal computer? Is it sharp edge? Does it have roundy edges? And what's the texture? Uh, is it hard? Is it soft and squishy? Is it fluffy or furry? What materials would you use for your computer? Would you use wood, um, acrylic, fabric, yarn, pom-poms, recycled bottles. What fabrication techniques would you use? Uh, would you resin cast? Uh, would you wheel throw your computer? Would you laser cut your computer? Would you 3D print it? What will the computation mechanism be? Will you use a board inside like a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino? Or would you embroider all of the electronics like the cloth computer we saw earlier? Or would it not even be electrical? Would you make a mechanical computer or use pneumatic tubes? How will your computer relay information? Will you have a screen? Will you have an e-ink screen? Um, will you just use a grid of LEDs? Um, or would you use a different sense? Would your computer only give you audio feedback or touch feedback? And once you have a design, what will you use to make a detailed schematic of your computer? 
Will you use a CAD program or will you blueprint it out all by hand? What will you make your first prototype from? Will you make it from paper, a muslin cloth? And lastly, what do you want to feel like when you use your computer? Where would you use it and what would you use it to do? I really hope you build your dream computer and I would love to see it when you do. Thank you.